Coming up on this episode of Outlook TV, Victoria's Pride Festival. Pride at BC Federation of Arts Gallery. Vancouver Pride Parade. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. We'd like to thank the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil Nations for the honor and privilege to film this episode of Outlook TV on their traditional unceded lands. Outlook TV is the queer news magazine show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. We're going to kick it off in Victoria with the Pride Festival. A festival on a small island? Love it. On this sunny day, we are at Victoria's Pride Festival. We've got the sun, we've got the shine, and we've got entertainment and in-person pride. Let's go check it out. This has been a fabulous, fabulous event. Being here at the Pride in the Park Festival is wonderful. We've had, we have music, we have entertainers, we have drag story time, we're having a lip sync battle. There is an incredible amount of talent on stage, local Canadian talent here in Victoria, and it is fabulous. This year, for the first time, we have the Vicious Poodle Pride Lounge, and this is a way to sort of celebrate the people who are our partners and folks who want to actually help us with our fundraising goals. So we have a sort of a, a, an elevated experience, if you will, and it's a way, it's a great way for us to raise money. All proceeds go to the Victoria Pride Society, and it's something just a little different, and it's so amazing because the Vicious Poodle has been such a great, it's like a community center for the two SLGBT plus QIA communities. There's music, there are drag queens, there is a lip sync battle, there are fun games for people to play here as well. There's a kids play area, you know, because Pride is for everyone. So I think there's a little bit of something for everybody. Well, the Vicious Poodle has been open. Um, it opened up during the pandemic, right at the beginning of the pandemic. And it's an incredible community space where we have um, queens, kings, things all performing on a brilliant stage. And people of all ages and backgrounds all come and enjoy um, just being queer together and really basking in being queer. It's amazing. the lounge we have a private bar we have some private washrooms so you don't have to wait any long lines and um, it's just a fabulous community space it's got a great vibe and it's right in front of the stage so you can see all of the wonderful things that are happening I won't be performing here, I'm just lounging. I walked in the parade in a bunch in eight inch stilettos and then we're gonna be performing later tonight at the Vicious Poodle. We do have a limited capacity, uh, and that has it hasn't impacted us too much. Although we're oh, pretty overwhelmed with the numbers of people that have come out, it's actually been really fabulous that so many people want to celebrate Pride in the city. Congratulations, Victoria. My name is Empress Fancy Pants for Outlook TV. Now we're going to head to Toronto to check out a montage of the Pride Parade. I like saying montage. Montage. I like mountains, or mounds, or bulges. Hello Canada! Toronto Pride finally returned in full force with in-person celebrations for 2022. And let me tell you, from June 1st to the 30th, Pride Month in Toronto had an extensive menu to suit all palettes. All of it, of course, culminated in the festival weekend with the Trans Rally in March on the 24th, the Dyke Rally in March on the 25th, and the Toronto Pride Parade seen here on the 26th.
Toronto welcomes all 2S LGBTQ plus communities and their supporters for another extraordinary month of expression and presentation in 2023. Happy Pride, Canada. For Outlook TV, I'm Bruno reporting from Toronto. It's time for us to take a break now. I think it's time for us to find where the rest of our pants are. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. We're headed to Vancouver for another montage for their pride. This is the 44th annual Pride Parade. We're back after a two-year hiatus and uh, we're getting ready and set to go. There is 120 entries, uh, approximately 10,000 people. That's before we even get out of here. We're not even talking about the people that are coming to watch. Well, uh, my stylist, uh, DJ Osho, and I'm walking with my mom's family with Musqueam. We're just like for the fifth time marching. This is my 21st year, I believe. Yeah, I started when I was 10. Um, seeing the crowd, you know, being back is, is pretty amazing. It's been a tough couple of years, especially for a lot of parents and people that are looking for support. We've been offering virtual support, which we continue to do, uh, but it's been tough for a lot of folks. My first one was when I DJed back in 2013 for Reconciliation Canada, and I've been in a parade ever, every year ever since. And I, I feel, I would feel weird if I didn't participate. <laughs> it's so much fun. <laughs> Today I'm here with Pacific Assistance Dog Society, or PAD. This little buddy is Camilo from the Encanto Litter. He is eight and a half weeks old and he is set to go out with his puppy razor soon. Oh, that's always oh, got his little pads. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's his very first day. So it's, it's his, his first time. Is it your first time marching? No, it is not. We were here years before and we're so delighted to be together again for this year's Pride Parade. Uh, today I'm with Clean Sober Proud, which is uh, a part of Last Door Recovery Society uh, and the Vancouver Pride uh, community, which uh, is hoping to have a, a safe space for, for those hoping to enjoy Pride without substances. Life can be tough sometimes, especially with COVID, uh, the drug, uh, you know, the overdose crisis, uh, and I think this is just a little part of the the joy that we get to have and, and uh, celebrate Pride. It's amazing and how everything's coming back together and the um, theme for Pride this year is together again so it makes so much sense that we're together again uh, in person to, hear, to be here to uh, watch the parade uh, in person. It feels wonderful you know it's uh, enthusiasm, excitement and, and a whole bunch of emotion because it's so good to see people again. And now we're gonna cycle from San Francisco to LA. Yes, and we're gonna get some food while we're at it with some Canadian bacon. How about a serving of some hot, smoking, fresh out of the oven Canadian bacon? We're catching up with this group of Canadian cyclists who are participating in an AIDS life cycle, which is a cycling fundraiser in California. They fundraise over 60,000 US dollars and they are proving that community has no borders. I got started with uh, AIDS Life Cycle in 2015. I bought my first red bike and I was interested to see if there was any uh, LGBT friendly or queer friendly um, bike rides and immediately identified AIDS Life Cycle ride. And so I went at it alone for my first year and fortunately got picked up kind of along the way. I joined um, Team PwC who uh, allowed me to ride with them for the first couple years 
Um, and that was really kind of the, the integration to the AIDS life cycle, the love bubble, the ride, the route, everything that it is. Doug approached me when I'd gotten back and said, I saw you on the ride, I saw your pictures, this looks incredible, I really want to do this as well. And collectively over the next year, we kind of found a few other individuals who wanted to join us and we said, well, we're from Vancouver, we're Canadian and on this predominantly American ride, so let's create a team. And, and the consensus for the team name was uh, Team Canadian Bacon. And uh, it was a big hit. Our first year, we had uh, seven team members on the ride and we wore bright pink uh, jerseys with a big muscle tatted up um, pig riding a bike. And I think we we're kind of the talk of the uh, day one ride. It was, it was a lot of fun. It's a fundraiser for AIDS HIV. Uh, why is that still important to you? Important to me um, because it affects our community. Um, you know, we've got the tools um, to eradicate HIV and we're still, you know, working towards that. Um, and I think anything we can do to continue to raise awareness, the, the agencies that this supports, there's a lot of research um, as, in addition to supporting um, people living with HIV and testing, etc. So really um, excited to, to work, you know, raise awareness or continue to raise awareness of their efforts and contribute to their research in particular because that benefits people like us in Canada through partnerships with organizations like him, et cetera, like that. This is, this is my first year involved and in, um, I know Doug and Bradley and have been here for a uh, number of years now, aware of the ride, really excited to be involved um, and uh, just take the opportunity to, to raise some money for HIV research. Mm -hmm. Supportive of, of, uh, of us and, and the American organizations, it's all about uh, ending AIDS and supporting, supporting those living with HIV AIDS that they can they can get in behind and really support us and, and raise the money as a team. So how did you go about raising those funds? Uh, we all were pretty individual uh, in, the, in the approach. We supported each other by you know, posting each other on social media and, and going through the, through the friends lists uh, and getting involved. But um, it, was all, it was all pretty much online and, and just sort of reaching out to those in our communities. Yum, yum, gentlemen. This is Empress Fancy Pants for Outlook TV. We're going to have to take a little break now. I'm wearing festive footwear, but Rebecca lost hers. Let's go find them. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. We're headed to Calgary to the Texas Lounge and Goliath's Bass, where you can get a cocktail with an emphasis on the tail. <laughs> Are you feeling thirsty? Or are you feeling horny? But we've got that covered. We're at the Texas Lounge and Goliath in Calgary. Let's go see what's under the towel. Texas Lounge actually originally was a part of Goliath. It was all one entity. Uh, so people would be in the bathhouse and have drinks in their towels in the lounge. And uh, at some point, I'm not sure when, they got VLTs in the Texas Lounge. So they had to separate it because you can't have a private club with VLTs. So they put a washroom to block off the entrance from the hot tubs into the bar and uh, made it separate and it called it Texas Lounge because there was a, a regular customer that used to come here and his name was Texas Bill. And he was a really suave guy who in his room he'd have drinks and stuff and he'd charm all the young guys in the bathhouse and uh, he passed away so when they separated the bar from the bathhouse they called it Texas Lounge in his name. There were nights when the wind was so cold. Oh the pandemic was scary um, obviously for the bath side we they actually classified the bathhouse as a sports team <laughs> they didn't know how to classify it for for health um, so they decided sports team and the first time we could reopen we were closed from March until about September and when we could reopen we could only have 50 customers per day and those customers could not return for two weeks. So yeah if you go left uh, you go right into the bathhouse door area and then right is going to the bar. And then yeah, you do all your check-in stuff. People that owned another bathhouse named David's, bought this one, and then called it Goliath's. So it was David's and Goliath's. <laughs> and there's a David's room? Yes, there's a David's room. It's one of our suite, but it's our only suite. <laughs> so we have two TV lounges. <laughs> uh, glory holes, hot tub, uh, showers, uh, single and double rooms, plus the suite. 
and Asana. We have drag shows, trivia, karaoke, and then in general, it's you know your friendly neighborhood gay bar. My favorite thing about Texas Lounge is it's one of the last bars in the city that you can walk into not knowing anybody, and you will know at least five people when you leave. Well, that quenched my thirst. This is Fancy from Calgary for Outlook TV. We're going to head over to Granville Island in Vancouver to check out some pride goings on. And Outlook TV's Olivier was there with his special art. It's pride season here in Vancouver, and today we're on Granville Island at the Federation of Canadian Artists Federation Gallery to speak to some of the representatives about their Pride and Centre exhibition. Let's go find out what it's all about. Well, this is an incredible event called Pride and Center at the Federation Gallery. So the Federation Gallery is part of the Federation of Canadian Artists. And this is the second year that they're doing this incredible show where they feature members of the 2S LGBTQIA plus community. Well, the Federation was founded in 1941, way back in the day, by the artists who were predominant at the time. So Lauren Harris, Emily Carr, uh, A.Y. Jackson. So being part of the Federation of Canadian Artists, uh, my career has really um, changed. Uh, last year when I joined this exhibition, I was showcasing only in Vancouver ever since. Uh, I'm now part of galleries in Montreal, Quebec City, Toronto, and in more gallery spaces in Vancouver. So really that show and this space has really allowed me to have growth as a queer artist across the country. Last year, it happened to be so successful that the Federation Gallery organizers have decided to make this a full-on event that is open to all members and outside members of the Federation Gallery and the Federation of Canadian Artists. So this year, queer artists are showcased um, and actually pride inspired by queer community because I believe not all of the artists are um, identifying as queer but also are allies. Beautiful to see that the gallery is really showcasing their members and showing support for their members here in the heart of Granville Island. So wherever you go around here, you see different interpretation of what pride means to them. And uh, for any aspiring artists that may be watching the show, can you give them some advice if they want to be part of this or who, how can they go about getting involved? Well, the first thing that they can do if they want to get involved is to go on the website of the Federation of Canadian Artists and they can also sign up to become regular members of the Federation. That way they will have all the newsletter, they can apply for shows and as they're applying for shows then they can apply to different levels to be active members or even signature members in the long run. Uh, it's really important if you want to start your career to show up to events, get to talk to people. Networking is important. I know we do a lot online but to actually be there in person and to talk to fellow people ask for advice, um, smile, be friendly, and also just not, not to be shy to be who you are. I think what I'm showcasing here at the Federation, and they've been so supportive in showcasing my art, is that I'm just being unapologetically myself. I'm here as a queer person, but I'm also here as a teacher, um, because teaching is part of my art. And you know, the best way to be successful is to be confident with your art and to just stay true to who you are and um, be proud of your uniqueness. And I believe that this is what this show also is all about. It's about like being true to who you are because it's only you and nobody else can do you like you. For Outlook TV, this is Angus Pratt at the Federation Gallery in Vancouver. That is all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV, but we'll be back before the sequins can fall off T's shoes. And then you can help me glue it back on while we follow all our social medias, and better yet, why don't you volunteer with us? We are a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And my name is T. Stay, Stay safe, safe, Canada. Canada.